The massive market estimated to be worth more than four trillion dollars worldwide, affecting a wide range of business sectors from e-commerce and fashion to manufacturing and high tech. As age-old processes begin or begin to shift to meet the demands of the internet age, logisticians and executives alike should understand the ways that these technologies are being transformed in various industries. Automation, robotics, wearable technologies, drones, self-driven vehicles, cloud computing, and Internet of Things. Uh, to take this further, I would like to invite Mr. Gopal R, who is the Global Vice President of Transport and Logistics, Frost and Summers. Uh, Mr. Gopal R is the Global Vice President, Transport and Logistics, Frost and Summers, with 18 years of experience encompassing management of consulting business units, country operations, new market development for research, consulting, and logistics services and project management. Kobal will take, take us through his presentation. Thank you, Kobal. Very good evening. So I can believe that it's going to be a challenging session to keep everyone awake, and including personally myself as possible. Okay, so it's going to be a very um, quick presentation, so let me introduce myself, I'm Gopal, I manage person solving transportation and logistics practice. Uh, I've spent a lot of time <coughs> in the Asia Pacific region and uh, now in, in this region for close to three, four years now. Um, I've also spent some time uh, on the other side of the fence, other than consulting, I've also been on the three peer side of the business, so I do understand. There are a lot of interesting presentations, um, you know, a lot of uh, views in terms of the technology. So what we have today, what we want to share with you is uh, some views from our perspective as a research and consulting organization uh, on uh, you know, these technologies and how they impact uh, and so on. So today, <coughs> what we have for you, uh, we've structured it uh, along these four different subjects. Let's look at a little bit in terms of the overview, so setting the context, so to speak, uh, and then technologies. I think many of these technology aspects, uh, people have covered, uh, many of the previous panelists, speakers, etc. but we want to kind of summarize. And the third is in terms of what does it have uh, as an implication from a business model standpoint uh, in terms of warehousing and then what what do you see as a uh, as a future of warehouse so firstly in terms of uh, if you see any logistics market uh, if you, even if you look at it from a country standpoint uh, even if you look at it from a company standpoint transportation will still account for a significant significant part of the business but the warehousing is the uh, sort of the heart of the, of the whole business which basically pumps the volumes. Uh, for example, <coughs> you see here, for instance, you know, from a freight uh, transportation as well as warehousing standpoint, freight obviously is a significant part of the overall uh, logistics business. But you also see that, uh, you know, without the warehousing, uh, the freight uh, it you know, doesn't really exist. For example, uh, recently I was at a warehouse and I saw a container of uh, you know, imported beef coming in into this cold storage warehouse. So I asked the, you know, the warehouse manager, how long is it going to take for this beef to get to the market? So his answer was 90 days. So 90 days, this is going to result in transportation volume, right? And this 90 days of transportation volume is feasible only when you store this for uh, in the cold storage warehouse. That is why warehousing is a significant part of the overall business. But there are always challenges in terms of, you know, from a general business environment standpoint, you know, you have, <coughs> in terms of, uh, you know, high degree of fragmentation, uh, transportation inefficiencies, uh, complexities in the global sourcing, uh, cost of last mile deliveries uh, and even in terms of you know, disruption. So when we're talking about disruptions in the ecosystem, today it is affecting the entire uh, 
you know, logistics eco ecosystem. And more specifically, if you look at uh, from a warehousing standpoint, there is a lot of activities that have been digitized or as we call it, you know, in today's environment, amplified. You know, everything has turned through an application. So in, even from a warehousing standpoint, you see things like, for example, robotics and dark warehouses, you know, inventory optimization, and forecasting, these are areas <coughs> These are areas for the future in terms of you know, where the transformation can happen. And of course, not necessarily just technology, there is also other you know, market drivers in terms of changing customer power, you know, innovative business models, value chain refurbishments. These are driving change. What technology is driving the change, you know, I think we have heard a lot of these presentations, technology is driving the change in terms of the automation. I like for example market factors like for instance you know e-commerce for instance so it is it is uh, it's changing the way in which the you know in which the, the supply chain needs to reinvent itself for example you know from a delivery perspective or in terms of the cost per mile perspective or in terms of for example customer convenience perspective <coughs> in terms of higher payloads to low payloads from delivery vans to delivery bots uh, in terms of locker boxes, uh, you know, to uh, you know, deliveries, uh, delivery to cars, and so on. So having said that, let's look at some of the key technologies from our perspective. So these six technologies, we believe, uh, will have an impact uh, from the warehousing standpoint. So you have robotics uh, and automation, <coughs> augmented reality, uh, wearables, uh, drone technology, IoT, as well as uh, you know 3D printing. So let's just go through uh, each of these to see what is the impact. So from a robotics automation perspective, so you will have the you know, the catchphrase seems to be like doing more with less, you know, like improving capacity utilization as well as uh, processing time. So areas that is impacted in the form of Automated storage and retrieval, uh, picking and packing, uh, palletizing, depalletizing, and you know uh, robotic process automation. And like the bubble says, you know, uh, for instance, it also emphasizes in terms of uh, return on investment. I can you know, pay for myself within three to nine months. You know? So this is also emphasizing that you know, there is a, a good business case in terms of return on investment. <coughs> The other is in terms of the augmented reality. So um, we've heard in one of the earlier panels in terms of you know augmented reality glasses and so on. So I visited an organization in, in, in Germany which is doing this augmented reality glasses and this has been uh, uh, taken up or uh, you know, this is uh, put to use in one of the leading warehouses uh, in Germany, for example. So you will see that uh, this is uh, something that focuses on increasing the productivity. Research indicates that this has, uh, this has resulted in increasing the productivity by almost about 45%. So it's more like right time, <coughs> right information at the right time in the right place, more like you know, transforming you know, the humans into human uh, 2.0 kind of uh, you know, situation, optimizing operations, warehouse planning. So it's <coughs> also playing a role in terms of the overall receiving, storing, picking uh, as well as you know, shipping and so on. The next is in terms of the wearables. I think you know, we saw a lot of examples, a lot of you know, talk around this earlier. So essentially focusing on uh, completing the warehouse tasks with uh, speed and accuracy. So here we're talking about uh, optimized uh, you know, vision picking, voice technology, finger trigger flows, activity tracking, break, uh, break and so on. Now, you would see that there is a lot of organizations which are the new age providers and also there is a lot of logistic service providers who are adopting these kind of technologies. So, essentially focusing in terms of <coughs> accuracy uh, improvements and productivity improvements and you can see that 20% of the logistics cost you know, goes into the warehouse operations and almost about out of that, 70% goes into uh, picking orders. So this is one of the reasons why you see that everybody is trying to squeeze that last bit of efficiency out of you know, those processes. And 
drones. You know, I think drones, we have always seen drones uh, put to, for example, a last mile that we use and so on. So in the warehouses, you will see that it is actually used for uh, stock taking of the inventory. Just about last month, I was visiting an organization in, uh, in Saudi, a logistics company. And they were building a state-of-the-art warehouse uh, in Jeddah. And they were putting to use uh, drones uh, to keep track of their stocks, as well as you know, monitor the resource productivity, uh, as well as you know, as well as uh, keep track of the inventory and so on. So this is not something that is just going on in terms of other developed markets, but we are also seeing these being uh, put to use some of the markets in this region. You know? so, <clears throat> so drones help in terms of intra logistics. Uh, surveillance, uh, digital inventory, as well as, you know, um, uh, locate <coughs> and, and integrate with the system. And of course, Internet of Things. So basically, it's about, you know, sort of connecting the you know, unconnected, so to speak. So it's basically linking up all of the devices and systems to ensure uh, it is real-time data and visibility, you know, because uh, earlier in you know, all the panels there was this question, real time versus uh, 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 you know, stock taking in terms of inventory. So this is, IoT is transforming things into a real time visible uh, system. And of course 3D printing, you know, earlier uh, I think you know, one of the recent motor shows I was seeing that uh, they were showing a 3D printed model of a vehicle. You know, so it is actually getting to a, uh, a state in terms of on-demand production facility, localization of warehouses, dramatic stock production, mass customization. So today you see that the application focuses more in terms of prototyping, product development, and technology innovation, aiming to reduce cost, uh, you know, and increase sustainability, and so on. So with these, you know, like, uh, of course there are a lot more um, technologies uh, that is put to use, but with these, how is this impacting from a warehouse standpoint? So today, <coughs> the technologies are aimed at scaling up the warehouse efficiency. So increase in the productivity, reduction in safety stock, as, as well as you know, space utilization. So what does this all mean? So today you will see that you know, there is new business models which are actually uh, coming up in terms of warehousing in the form of Airbnb of warehouse, for example, platforms which are actually matching space available in one location with whoever is going to probably look for the space. Dark warehouses. So you are actually looking at a scenario of a complete, you know, robotic warehouse where there are no people, there is no need for lights, uh, and so on. Mobile warehouses with the kind of challenges in terms of e-commerce delivery. Today, you know, for example, you now people have moved from, uh, you know, in terms of e-commerce deliveries from delivering, uh, they used to be 48 hours, then 24 hours, now we are talking about, you know, same day deliveries. It has gone to the extent of same hour deliveries. So I was talking to one of the logistics companies in, uh, again, in Saudi. So they have come up with a model where they have urban warehouses within Saudi so that uh, they can actually deliver within four hours. So I asked him, why do you want to deliver within four hours? You know, his answer was, a lot of times people order, uh, you know, they make a you know, purchase online. Uh, it's, a, it's an emotional state, it's an emotional decision making, right? So uh, they make the decision most of the time, the, the women, you know, buy something. By the end of the day, you know, they tell their husband that, you know, I got this. So then the discussion starts, why did you buy it? It kind of thing. The next day, from uh, an excited purchase decision, it actually moves to guilt. And by the time the next day the product arrives, you are in a state of denial. That I don't need it. So you actually return it. And you have most of these markets are cash on delivery and consequently, you know, they when it is returned, you know, the logistics service providers are squeezed. So that is why the logistics companies have not come up with the idea that okay, I'm going to deliver before you actually get over that emotional desire. And then later it is up to the <coughs> company when it when it has to, you know, deal with the returns. <coughs> so you have those, so that is mobile warehouses are addressing those kind of, you know, the, the, the need to fulfill those kind of, you know, deliveries. And then you have also, you know, green warehouses, you know, which fulfill, you know, the sustainability angle at the same time. 
the, the cost uh, aspects and so on. So where does this lead uh, all of us to in terms of warehousing? So today, for example, you know, one of the common underlying themes that you would actually see is that innovation is about simple steps. People are innovating simple steps with a view to get exponential impact. For example, if you see that <coughs> people are looking at you know, maybe e-commerce demands in terms of, you know, and then you have reduction in pickup time, reducing time, optimizing, more or less you know, the underlying theme will always, always be the same. So you have players focusing on the simple steps. You know, you, you, when you observe some of the you know, new technologies that people are talking about, it will always be around trying to squeeze the simple steps or digitize those and convert, you know, like action, for example, with some of these variables. You know, you don't need to actually train these people. You can actually get them to wear the glasses and they are off they go. You know, the, the, the time that is required for them to, up to, to be up to speed is very, very limited. So all this, uh, you know, as uh, you know, probably you can visualize from loading to you know, delivery, uh, pick up and so on, this is going to see a complete uh, you know, transformation in terms of uh, automation uh, through different kinds of technologies. And every simple process uh, that we look at uh, is going to get converted into an automatic. Uh, you know, earlier, one of the panels, uh, or one of the earlier discussions uh, already met, uh, you know, was mentioning uh, you know, increasingly in future, we are not the, in the from a warehouse perspective. We are not going to be talking to each other. It is going to be machine. We are going to be talking to a machine, machine to machine communication. Now. So this is what is going to be an interplay of technology, as we would like to call it, a living sensing warehouse you know, in, in terms of the future. So that's about it. I don't want to keep you too uh, too occupied. Post lunch, then here for coffee session. So over to you uh, for any questions. Those of you having any questions, I think your uh, presentation was pretty clear. Thanks for sharing all the key technologies, Gopal, uh, uh, as ever, and uh, I think it was very, very aptly put. Um,